Well, here we are in the Florida Everglades. For the next three days, me and my buddy Scott are gonna be living in a houseboat in the Everglades and chasing after big fish. And that is basically our only agenda. We're gonna try to catch some fish to eat, catch some big tarpon, catch some snook, anything and everything the Everglades has to offer. And today, start day one. All right, it is finally time to start fishing. I am throwing a twitch bait. Scott's rocking a paddle tail right now. We're drifting across a big flat looking for redfish, trout, snook. Maybe we'll see some big tarpon cruising. Kind of just wet in the beak. Jack behind him. All right, first fish of the trip. Do something a little different today from the rest of the trip. Got a little paddle tail. This nice trout ate. Probably 15, 16 inches. Yeah, I bet you're a keeper, but we got bigger fish in mind for keeping for dinner than yes. him. There's a certain fish that we want to eat tonight. Hopefully we find him. There he goes. <laughs> Just how I wanted to release him. Hold on to your butt, Scott. Hold on to your butt? I said, hold on to your nuts. I'm about to be happy. <laughs> finger molies. Those are little fingers. That's like the best Those size. Are nuggets, Those probably. are the best size finger molies. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, I see them. We gotta get a little closer. With mullet, dude, it's all about like the low lion slinger. That'll do. I love the other well. I think we'll be enough right there. We just set up on a river point, and the current's just beginning to flush out. Lawson loaded up on finger mullet, so plan is to sink some down. See if some snook, reds, maybe a tarpon. I want to cooperate. All three should be here. All right, here's the setup. I'm going to free line one of these beautiful little finger bullet across this point, and Scott's rocking a little bit on the bottom. Yeah, drop. No. Oh, he's running at you. There it is. Scott is on. You got a shark. I'm trying to be optimistic here. I also don't know how heavy it feels. Is it pretty big? It's a heavy fish, yeah. I don't think it's like in a snook class, I think it's like a way heavier. Way heavier fish, but maybe we'll get surprised. Sharky. Not a small shark either. No, dude. A lot of those here. Do you think you had something that like ate your mullet and it's then possible. he ate it instantly? There's a lot of sharks here that'll eat your other fish. There it goes. Okay, well first sign of action. Probably like an eight foot, was it a bull? I think it was like, yeah, a bull. Probably Seven, like an eight, eight 80 pounder. Yeah. Maybe not eight, but nice size bull. Oh, just got eaten on the free floating live mullet, free line them. It does not feel like a very big fish. Could have been a catfish, could have been a triple tail for all I know. But I was out there quite a ways and something just came up and slurped it. <sighs> oh, you see all that blowing up too? What'd you say? Oh, bunch of stuff blowing up as well. I did. Just got eaten. Did you? Yeah. Oh, God. Snook. There it is. 
on the paddle tail. They do exist. They were, one was needed. We were throwing, this is an interesting fish, man. They sure are. You see off the edge a little bit? Yep. Little Everglades snooklet right there, and he's gone. There he goes. It's interesting. We have been throwing live bait basically all day and haven't really been catching snook or redfish. It's a lot of catfish and ladyfish. That was maybe my fourth cast with an artificial and picked up a snook. Funny how that works. We're running. What's that? I said you could bait them. Oh, those are spannies, dude. That's what I thought. I'm pretty sure. We're running up and down the beach, seeing fish blowing up everywhere. That's so cool. Oh god! Oh Jack, look at that. That is really cool. Holy cow! All right, let's check out. <laughs> that was really neat seeing them. Oh wow, that was a big fish. Seeing like erupt underneath the boat like that. Oh, there he is. Oh my god, in the middle of all the jacks? <laughs> yeah. What? I don't How know. is that even possible? Spaniard. There we go. That is a keeper. They only need to be 12 inches. 12 the fork, and he's definitely over that. Yeah. You never do. Uh, literally thousands of jacks, and you catch the one fish that's not a jack. All right. All right. Spanish. Finds him. Finds him. And in, in the school of Jack Revol. How interesting. Another Espanol. one right there. I can make a pretty good cast with this rod. Where's he at? Oh, I see him, I see him. Yeah, I could probably perfectly. I just, I think if I can get one. There it is, there it is, there it is. Didn't even, <laughs> didn't even flinch. He's just gonna cross his eyes. I know. That is so fat in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a big thing ever seen from a triple thing. <laughs> I just can't believe that run he just went on. Dude, they're strong fish. Then we got a second one back there. The second one I honestly think is bigger. Hope he hits 18. Oh. I'm out of there. Yeah. Alright. This is it. Um. Alright, just got the leader. Alright. Alright. Weeds. With another one right behind him. That's a, that's that's a big one. Deep. Here, let's um, let's do this. Let's just measure him real quick. I spot locked us, and that triple tail's just sitting there. Got to go 18 on him. He should be 18 for sure. He's 20. 19 and a half. Almost 20. 19 and a half. He keeps. All right. Get that circle look out of there one of the coolest fish ever and this is like the eighth one we've seen today but one of the bigger ones and there's another one sitting behind the boat that is a triple tail and this is my favorite fish basically on planet earth to eat so i think he'll go in the box and we might have an excellent dinner tonight a spanish mackerel and triple tail man they are such a cool fish and there's another one behind the boat so we're gonna conk him in the head <laughs> throw him in the ice box and then let scott whack this other one behind us
I thought it was one. That's a giant. Dude, that other one, that other big one, he didn't scare much. Dude. Popped off. Dude, that other one's right there. He didn't spook. <laughs> what the heck is that about? Not a fighter, this one. Do you almost instantly grab that? Yeah, why not? Triple tail number three hooked up. These guys brawl. This fish had no idea what happened when he hooked him. When we hooked him, he like we literally. We could have netted him in the first two seconds. He swam right to the boat. Did. And then. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they are the coolest fish, man. They are so cool. All right, All right next up. Awesome. Hold on, friend. That is just the like, exact that's same just, size, not maybe bigger. Big. And within minutes of Lawson getting his big triple tail, I just got my own. These guys have. He cut you just like that? The most wicked. Gill rakers of all time. I was under his belly. Let me let me grab the bugger grip. They're literally the most armored fish ever. Look That's at that. insane. Lawson said when he grabbed his fish that this is the only fish that he would grab with the bugger grip, and to be honest, I agree with him. But the thing is, I wasn't even near it. I'm not I'm not a boga guy. It's the only one that bogas up. <laughs> First triple tail for me today. Not all that different from the one Lawson just caught. I would guess this fish is also in that like 19 inch class. We'll measure him to make sure, but we'll probably take one home too. Or I'll take one home. They are the most prehistoric are, fish, man. Like They are such a cool fish. They are designed to look like a leaf, armored to the bone, like those gill rakers. Every single inch of them is sharp as hell mm -hmm. and designed to stop things from eating them. Oh, you know, know what I'm gonna do with this one? A little top water. You have to go very quick. Ah, <laughs> he's still he's on it. That was funny. I'm I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not really. Oh it. my gosh, dude, that is a. I actually don't care. If you catch it. That he's sitting there looking at it right now. Like that one does look a little better. Than oh, that. he munched it. Did he really? Yeah. Hang on. Oh, that might be a big brother. Big happy. Dude. Oh, he's about the same size as the other ones, actually. He looked like he was enormous. They all look so big when they're swimming sideways, man. You just don't know what you're gonna get with them, man. They might dive, they might just run, they might jump six feet in the dude, air. They can jump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized. Dude, they got the little the triple powered engine in the back, man. I, I don't know why. This one feels so much heavier than my first one. I don't know if I just had so much adrenaline on the first fish. I'll tell you what, man, this light spinning rod you just drop bombs on those things we're throwing a weightless shrimp like 30 yards at them oh my god Whew. oh god almighty flip it flip <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Dude, the sharks here are just insane. Oh my god. You hit your you, trolling you just motor? Hit my trolling motor. Did you hear that? Yeah. Wow, that was almost a moment. That almost sucked. I flipped them in. The boat flipped them with the, the light spinning rod. That was horrifying. 
Yeah, I was literally thinking to myself, like, I was like, oh, you know what? Like, I will let him go. Look at that, another triple right there, little one. I was like, I'm going to let him go, and if we catch a big, giant one, then we have, like, you know, we catch a 15-pounder, we keep him and leave my slot open. But I'll leave, because two per person per day. So I got my two, and we'll leave Scott open to try to catch a big, giant one then, I suppose. Austin the meat fisherman. <sighs> Trying to make excuses. You just want to eat that triple Dude, tail. Dude, triple tail is my favorite fish, and I'm growing in my ways of, you know, I want to go out and catch some fish, but do it responsibly, you know? Can you see him? Dead in front of us, yeah. I can see his tail flicking. He's not super huge. Oh, in the grass? Yeah. Right, like literally in the grass? Literally dead in front of us. Oh, that's him. He's in the grass? Yeah, he's literally like nestled, nestled yeah. in there. It's like a 12 incher. Yeah. This is the type that you catch with dip net. Watch this. <laughs> He's got a baby reward on him. Hang on, I'm distracting. He got him. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you I free netted them more. <laughs> Dude, that is hilarious. That's a cool one. It's cool how many different colors they come in. One last triple tail. It was a bait and switch. I like to give myself a little credit. Yeah. <laughs> and he's gone. Yeah, you held the shrimp in place and just kept them distracted while I slid the net underneath them. We were just getting ready to pack it in. And Scott spotted one more, one more tailor. Turned on it, turned on it. Oh, he's chasing your shrimp around, man. Look at that. You grab it. No. Oh. Oh, oh. He didn't eat it. He's right here. <laughs> he ate it right there at the boat. What was that? Yeah, now we're, now we're gonna call it a day. <laughs> See you guys back at the back at the houseboat. This is without a doubt the most insane like triple tail action I've ever seen in my entire life. Probably seen more today collectively than I've seen like most of my life. But he's been hit by a shark. Poor ombre. Now we're done. Last one. It's like literally grabbing a little grenade. <laughs> Dude, they are, they are the scariest fish to hold. They're just so spiky. So strong, there's like no soft spot on him to really get a hold on either. Dude, they're just armored. Got a couple triple tail in the ice. We have a big storm brewing away. So I think we're gonna get an early start on making some good dinner here and run back to the houseboat and kind of get settled in and we can actually show you guys where we're staying for the night. You know, today was one of those days where it wasn't what we thought it was gonna be, but it ended up like coming together in a really cool way in the end. Sometimes you gotta keep pushing and keep your nose down and just try to find fish. It's a great looking cooler, dude. So fatty triple tails. That was a really nice group of triple tails. That was a lot of fun. And dude, the biggest one that we hooked by probably a long shot and the biggest one that we saw otherwise, we both didn't get. Crocodile until it comes out. <laughs> oh! Easiest fish to fillet in the entire world, the Spanish Mac. No raised backbone. <laughs> that is like literally the cleanest fillet I've ever seen in my entire life. I know, dude, they just fillet so nice. Lawson, the newfound meat fisherman, is currently grabbing the first of three triple tails that we're gonna clean up today. All right, beautiful stuff. We forgot to actually bring a real fillet knife, so we're using my fancy chef's knife that I just bought the other day, but it should get the job done. Triple tail are a super, super tough fish, so we'll see how this does.
Not bad for the chef's knife, dude. I'm not leaving any meat behind. The process is just not very seamless. Okay, so we're gonna show you guys something pretty cool. Everglades National Park is not only home to alligators, but also the American crocodile. And there's only about 2,000 of these guys in the wild compared to two and a half million alligators. Totally different. Got a big circular nose, teeth stick way more out of the mouth, much more rounded triangular head. And this guy's pretty big. He's probably pushing 10 foot. Yeah. What do you think, dude? I can't believe him just sitting there looking at us. That is a, a big croc. And I've seen big alligators, man. That is so interesting. His snout, is there something messed up with his bottom jaw? It looks like yeah, I think there, yeah, oh, he's, got a, he's got a messed up bottom jaw. Completely split. I wonder if he got hit by a prop or something. Might be the worst thing you've ever seen me do, so bear with me. I'm saying the There's a lot of mosquitoes in the Everglades, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, there is. All right, take two. I sang the lyrics wrong, anyways. This day is getting older in the fading light. It's beautiful. This wind is blowing colder And too soon I feel its pull Still I took all my chances Earned myself an even score Try to learn my lessons well But I don't have the answers For those questions anymore only love can be both heaven and hell So study up, study up your heart For the road is long ahead Be with you even though it gets hard But the road is yours to tread And so it goes so it goes, so it goes, slows your mind, 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 so it goes. I've grown old on this ocean, I gave her all my stronger years. Gave my wife my devotion And when she died the ocean my tears Tried to teach you well son All of everything I knew How to live this life be true Don't bow your head to no one No matter what you do If you start then see it through <coughs> study up, study up your heart For the road is long ahead I'll be with you even though we're apart but the road is yours to tread And so it goes And so it goes So it goes It slows your mind, mind, mind So it goes
Two beds in the back. A shockingly big bathroom and the living quarters. What's the plan, Austin? The black in it? Black. Like. But I'd say garlic powder, paprika, pepper, salt are staples. Yeah. So black and seasoning, it's really about just like drowning what you're cooking in seasoning, right? Yeah, giving it hard crust. Crust. Going in. Yeah, it's ready. You ready? Yeah. That triple tail was literally made for this pan. <laughs> I guarantee you that's what that triple tail was thinking when we caught it. So I, I, was, I, be, I could not be a better size for these guys. I was born for the skillet. <laughs> Great t-shirt. Yes. Oh, 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 dude. That's looking good. Fish is done. I'm gonna make a quick sauce go over top of fish and rice here. Everything we're using is literally <laughs> from the marina here. So we are making do and improvising. Let's do one more, okay. First taste. Trailer park triple tail. <laughs> Coming right up. That's good. You like it? I see what you mean with your comparison to like like a bigger, thicker flounder or something like that. It's got a softer texture, but the meat holds good. Dude, not bad for houseboat in the middle of nowhere. That came out really good. Very good. I don't think really often you get like a mega mega delicate fish that also has a thick fillet and that's what you get out of this where it's like it's right. really delicate but still thick enough to where like it holds together a little firmly where we're talking about earlier sea trout just like fall apart when you press and it's your such a small fish yeah in comparison it's probably not a mind-blowing flavor but you no. can see how like you just couldn't go wrong with this like you could probably put it in literally any dish of any type and it'd be like yeah it's good Mosquitoes are crazy here, man. And this is apparently not that bad, but they're like crawling everywhere. Yeah, there's just mosquitoes all over your back. I, right now. I just killed three and I won't stop. two out here on the water we have jumped into my boat today scott's boat stayed at the marina and we are looking for tail and redfish tarpon trout snook whatever and we're going to do some really skinny stuff you know yesterday we had our meat day and today's about chasing after some big game fish scott said it to me yesterday like you're in a place that you dream about going to fish when you're a kid growing up in florida or hearing about fishing in florida All right, I am up here on the sticks. Scott is down below rolling a paddle tail. We're just gonna really try to see what we can figure out. This is all new water to us, all new territory. I think that's the most exciting part about it. Look, look, see the tail? Just flick right there. You feel like you can reach it, go for it. I think he's faced away from us. Now we turn back to the left. Real, 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 real. You're right in front of him. It might hit him. It's gonna book him. You can't see him. That was like a 24, 25 inch redfish just swam right up to the boat. That right there, yep. He's going from right to left and towards us. So this is like one of the better shots we've actually had out of fish because we're in front of him, not behind him. 
All right, he's tailing again. And this is actually, we're almost like sideways to him a little bit here. Going left. He's going left. See, now he's almost like perpendicular to the boat. So throw a couple feet to the left of that. Real slow. I mean, that should have been in his zone. He's on it. He's on it. Yeah. Yeah, he's on it. Boom, baby! There we go, awesome. Scott. That's what's up. in the boat so <laughs> off he goes but that was the first red of the morning we've seen probably i'd say about 10 so far grazing in the flat some tailing some not that was one of the smaller ones too that was definitely that was crazy smaller. he engaged very slow had to spend a lot of time working him probably close to 10 seconds before he finally committed but he he ate nice and hard good wish job. i could hold him up a little longer but didn't want to bonk him in the boat so good job man lawson will probably go up front now i'll take over on the pole I see it. Red fish right here. Little one. Current from it. Got it. There it is. Oh, a little free swimmer right there, huh? Love it. That was sweet. Whew. Beautiful. Got ourselves a redfish here. Free swimmer. Didn't actually see him tail. He just kind of slowly swam by the boat and we were able to flick a cast right into his noggin. This is some of the most fun stuff I've ever done. It is probably 99 degrees outside and it feels like I'm swimming because it's that hot, but this is freaking very, very cool. A beautiful Everglades redfish right there. My first one on the trip, probably a 19, 20 inch or similar size one that Scott caught. But man, when you get to sight cast these fish, especially when they're tailing like Scott's was, it is one of the coolest things in all of fishing, I think, man. What a awesome fish. Hopefully we can catch some bigger ones today. Today's goal is to catch a lot of big game fish. And he's getting there. Get out of here. We are off to a great start this morning, man. I'll tell you what. I'm engaged. Honestly, you know what we should do today? Rig up your uh, eight weight, whatever fly rod you have, with a shrimp fly I have. That was sweet. Nice. Sick. They can eat the paddle tail, no problem. Yeah. Me and Lawson did not eat breakfast and before the tide came in too far and we were too committed we decided to go back to camp get some food but we couldn't resist looking for a couple triple tail as we went no live shrimp today so i threw a paddle tail at this guy same exact thing the redfish ate too yeah literally the exact bait and he ate it right up the pliers right behind you Yesterday's triple tail left a nice gash in my hand that I've been feeling it all morning when I pulled for Lawson, so I am gonna be a little extra careful right now. Feeling a little gun shy. Yeah. And just send him on his way. Good stuff. So we stopped in the marina to refresh on some supplies here. We got a new bag of ice, so we're draining the cooler of the old melted ice, and we're literally sitting here 
water's draining, and this dude literally found the water draining off the edge of the cooler. It's pretty cool. You're not supposed to give them water, like put hoses in the water for them or anything like that, because they learn to associate like boats with getting fed or water, but we were not really trying to do anything. He just came up and he's licking cooler droppings. I don't think it's a tarpon, but something ate trout. Oh, God. No, I don't know if that's a trout. Little tarpon. Got awesome. him. They got him. <laughs> awesome. Woo. All right. Scott spotted a tarpon rolling, and I just slowly worked a fluke or a uh, little paddle tail. Hey, that's Snook Redfish Tarpon today. We got a slam. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Just a little tarpon. We definitely would like to see if we can catch a bigger one here in the glades than this, but this thing looks like a freaking giant pilchard. <laughs> tarpon have like a sweet spot of like when they're this small, they're super hard to hold. And when they're really big, they're very hard to hold. All right. <sighs> the jumbo pilchard. Beautiful little, probably four or five pound tarpon right there. Scott with the spot and the hookup on that. I never even saw it. He just pointed me in the direction and said, throw as far as you can that way. And he ended up slurping it. And that makes a redfish trout, no, no trout, redfish, snook, and tarpon for today. We need a trout and we'll complete the Everglades slam. Five pounds is a little generous. Three. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Scott. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> You're a little thicker than one I yeah, got. Tell you what, they're very receptive to eating, which is nice. Dude, the curly tail grub. Just kicking it old school. Here you gotta be very mindful that at any moment, an H for long shark is gonna try and eat this thing. And potentially, your hand as well. Your hand with it. Anyways, no more than a minute after Lawson just caught that tarpon, I got one for myself. We're seeing a bunch roll around. This one's a lot bigger than Lawson's. <laughs> maybe five pounds. But that means it is 66% bigger, so. Wow, I'm, I'm thanks doing, for the math lesson, Professor. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Lawson needs to catch a bigger one now. They're pretty back here. A lot of green and blue on the dorsal fin. Really, like, literally reminds me of a big pilchard, you know? That's all they are. Awesome. Oh, that's either a big trout or a medium sized snook. Dude, that might be a trout. Snook. Dang. All right. My first snook of the day. Developing situation of a very large thunderstorm brewing right across from us and every single boat out here in the Everglades all of a sudden just started running at once. So we have to unfortunately trolling motor off this flat and then we're able to start the outboard and run for it. Ha <laughs> ha 
Okay, we have transitioned. Heading into the back country. There's so many mosquitoes that like, I literally cannot pull my buff down. Like we're getting slaughtered by them right now. We have decided to switch over to kind of the back country. The wind kind of flared up out in the bay, so we are moving deeper and deeper. And this is kind of like what I think about the Everglades, what I think about, like windy mangroves, stained water. It's got me fired up, and we're mainly gonna be trying to hunt down some big snook and big tarpon. Scott says there are some redfish back here, but mainly snook and tarpon, which I love. So, we're gonna do a bit of running here through these mangrove tunnels and canals and out into the bays of the back country and see what we can find. Pull up to some mangroves right here. Developing situation seems the story of the day. We got two mega storms kind of hanging off from us and we're just hoping they stay that way. Yeah. Oh, I just got crushed. Go for it. I mean, uh, for all I know, it could have been a freaking ladyfish, but I mean, I was full reeling and just poof. Snook Junior. Oh my God, behind me, behind me, behind me. Holy crap, you were multiple of them. Yeah. Crazy, man. That that was neat, man. Scott caught a little snook and he had two over 35 inches following him. Sure, we'll be fine, but just to uh, be safe. Let's go over to the other side, at least just a little bit. Should we. Oh, there's a fish. I don't know what it is, but. Really? Wow. Big old mangrove snapper. Mangy. Run. Are we really gonna get hit by that one too? That, that one stopped moving entirely and just sitting there building. And the wind is now howling into us. God, we've been plagued by storms today, man. This gargantuan thunderstorm is really harsh in our vibe here so we, we've kind of backpedaled a little bit to see if we could find some uh safety i think i'm tarpon holy crap that thing was poked me in the face we moved a lot oh there we go i was gonna say oh. Oh, God, that was crazy eat. Dude, that tarpon meant business. Oh, we finally returned to the bigger water. Yes. The storm is fading away from us. We're still surrounded by storms, but we're able to get some fishing in, I think. Oh, big. That's a big snook, Scott. Do you want me to throw my swim bait in? Pick yourself up. That was a big snook. I saw his tail fin come out of the water. What is that hanging from the tree? Dude, is that a dead bat or something? No, we gotta look at that. Dead bird hanging from fishing line? That could be. How hard is that to get? You literally barely, you pulled it out by hand. You didn't have to cut anything. No. That is why you retrieve your snags. Unnecessary, but if you leave a snagged line hanging in the trees, then birds get tangled and I can't. that happens. Some sort of bird of prey, little one. It almost looks like, like a little kestrel or something yeah, like that. Yeah, kestrel probably is what that is, actually. Scott made a good point. When we pulled up, he goes, it's unbelievable that even out here, 
you can find dead birds tangled up in fishing lines, stuff like that. I mean, you drive this this far down to go to the Everglades fish, you can't go an extra five feet to cut the line off of a tree. It's unbelievable, man. Oh my god. It's all uh Dinner number two. Gator Carbonara from a 12 foot alligator that we killed last year. And bacon that we bought from the supermarket. <laughs> You ready? Pasta from Italy. Pasta from Italy in a box. Oh, truth. So good. For being out in the middle of nowhere, we've eaten very well this trip. Not rough in it. Fresh triple tail, alligator carbonara. A lot of really bad boat snacks though. Yeah. <laughs> but the dinners have been... We ate maybe the most like disgusting tuna salad sandwich today while on the boat from a like, literal marina that the, I think the sandwich expired in like nine days or something, which is scary. Yeah, considering that sandwich might have been there for months, but these, these work. These hit the spot. These make up for it, for sure. If you get food poisoning, it was nothing from that sandwich. <laughs> yeah. I think, dude, it's so easy. I mean, we were out in the boat today for, what, 12 hours? Yeah. Basically. A lot of time missed because of rain and stuff, but yeah. And it'd be, I said, Scott, when we were on the boat, I was like, how nice would it be if we were somewhere where we could just order a pizza when we got back and not have to worry about it? But then, like, once you finish cooking, you have a meal like this, you're like, all right, it was worth it. It was worth taking the time to do that because it's freaking rules. Yep. Yeah. Wow. What's up, Chocodile? A change of game plans here. We originally left the boat in the water on the backcountry freshwater side here because we were going to go fish there in the morning. And we we're kind of being lazy and we woke up this morning and we're like no we need to go back out to the flats and chase those redfish and snook around and tarpon on the flats and uh not get bit by mosquitoes so we had to pull the boat out of the freshwater side take it to the saltwater side and the meme to while get absolutely eviscerated by mosquitoes i mean like my back is crawling yeah oh my god Scott and I are both super high tolerant to mosquito people, and this is enough to make our skin freaking crawl out here, dude. It is unreal. Let's go. Scott, last day, let's make him proud. Let's go, baby. Oh, I'm getting absolutely munched. It's so bad. <laughs> oh. Get us out of here. Yeah, let her out. Good God, there's gotta be like 400 in my back. Well, it is our last morning here in the Everglades. And we're back on that flat where we're seeing all those redfish. We've done so many different things, but I think like the most stimulating for us so far, gosh, a freaking shark just hammered something out there. The most stimulating for us so far has been pulling for redfish. It's technically challenging pulling, but once you get on them, they're not impossible to get to eat. It's just been super fun. And anything to get us away from the mosquitoes that we dealt with yesterday, I think was uh, gonna infect our decision making. We had a lot of really good shots yesterday on big snook and none of them panned out. And we spent a couple hours last night deciding if we wanted to focus on them again or bang out a couple easier fish and we chose the easy way out, so. Solely because we didn't want to get bit so bad by mosquitoes. Yes, the mosquitoes alone were really bad, so. 
all those ripples out there, those are all sharks pooling off the flat. Like that's one right there. Another one, another one. Those two swimming side by side is really cool looking, man. Feel it on their dorsal, like when their dorsal fin starts creeping out of the water too much, they all know it's time to go. Like clockwork, every shark working around is just dumped off the flat at once. At least all the bigger ones did. Yeah. Like those are all the biggest ones that we've really seen on the flats too. Like I bet we'll still see some of those little like two, three footers, but those are all five and a half foot lemon sharks. That was super bizarre. We are back on the sticks once again. Scott's up front. We have the mega storms out there, but they should be going away from us. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% one right there, Scott. He's facing away from us. Yeah, that one's Let's go for the one on the right. That one's closer. Facing left? Yep. Oh, he's engaged on it. Boom, baby! So sick. Let's go, Scott. Good job, brother. First sailing route of the morning. That's a pretty decent one. I think he's a little bigger than the ones from yesterday. They just started showing up maybe five minutes ago with the way the tide's at. And I think we made a cast on this one already, and he spooked a little bit, but reset right back up, made another cast, and got him. Pretty awesome to be able to say cast these fish in like six inches of water. But there's a bunch around us. So I think the plan now will be for Lawson to get up in front. I'll get on the pole, and we'll see if we can't find another one. Like 45 pounder, right? No, it's way bigger than 45. I think so. Dude. Way bigger. Like 70, 80. Just want to get the. Coming at you. Yeah. Coming at you. Last line. Drop it. He engaged on it right there. He literally followed it in. Dude, that almost happened. And he, he literally, he got right underneath it. Why don't you think he ate? I don't know. I'm shaking. Right here in front of us. Boom! There it is. Not a tailor, just one digging around in the mud. It's a good one. Beautiful. Dude, he's trying to grasp me up. These fish aren't huge, but none of them are that small. No. Not a lot of rats. All just like lower slot size fish. Which it would be sweet if they're all like mid upper slot size fish, but I guess that makes catching even like those like really rewarding, you know? This actually is a pretty bigger one. I mean, he's around the same size, but he looks a little longer, mangier. Woo! Who dug? All right, I'm into my first red of the morning. It took me a little bit. I was trying to be cheeky and throw a different lure than what we've been throwing at the reds all trip and they had to reject it. Switched over to what we've been throwing, just a little gulp minnow and they crunched it. Yeah, this is a bit of a longer one. He's not super thick, but he's longer. Hooked right in the corner. Hooked right in the corner pocket of the mouth. Okay. Better fish. Yeah, he's longer. I bet he's 23. And that is a beautiful redfish on our last day here in the Everglades. Unbelievable trip so far, man.
that tarpon literally has me shaking. These redfish are a ton of fun, but seeing an 80 pound tarpon chase down your fly for a second will freak you out. But literally turned around two minutes later, caught a redfish. Good consolation prize, I suppose. Let's get him back in the water. Oh. Beautiful. Man, this trip has been unbelievable. Just a ridiculous amount of quality fish. We haven't caught that monster, which I know Scott and I would love to do, but big triple tail, slot reds, some smaller snooks, seeing a big tarpon, jumping around little tarpon. I mean, I don't know, a trip where I've had more fun and it was just a easy drive, a couple nights day out in the woods. Whew. Scott, what do you think? Redfish on the fly or do we go try to look for tarpon and snook somewhere? Redfish on the fly. You want to catch one on the fly? They're in front of us right now. All right, I'll pull you on the one on the fly. So we saw it from about 200 yards out. It's either the same one or another one, another big tarpon cruising across the flats where you can see his tail fin sticking out of the water and him just chasing around some bait. So Scott's got the tin weight in hand and I'm trying to push. I've been basically doing probably like a 300 yard, 400 yard push across this flat. I'm trying to creep up on this sucker. I'm gonna kind of probably just like really try to get on them. It's like we either get the shot or we don't, you know? I think, honestly, I'm just gonna keep after him. And he'll probably turn around at some point. I think, I mean, he hasn't been swimming in a straight line this whole time. No. Again. Oh. Oh. Let's put it on his nose. Give him a mustache. He tried to eat it, didn't he? He tried to eat it and he missed. He literally tried to eat it and he whiffed. He went How's that possible? Tried to chase down the big tarpon, did the marathon like 400 yard push after him. He tried to eat Scott's fly and he basically just missed the fly and then swam off. And now the past like 24 hours have just been plagued by bad weather. We have a huge, we have a huge storm developing out in front of us. I just got that lightning bolt perfectly. Nice. So we're gonna run and look for some triple tail while we kind of make our way back to the ramp. The triple tail have been a pretty sure thing for the most part. I think we're gonna try to throw the fly at them, kind of mix it up on our last day. Maybe we'll throw, uh, if we catch a real big one in the ice, but otherwise might be more of a catch and release mission, right? I know, I see that. <laughs> They're going under before they even got over there. Yeah, before you landed. Wow. This will take that back. Triple tail on the fly. And there was a shark kind of present, so we might have to work on this thing pretty quickly here. There's another behind you. Bigger one? I'm gonna try him. Yeah, go for it. Let's see if we can double up. Look right here. Oh, yeah. Feels like a very tough fish. We're doubled up on triple tails. How's that? I, got, awesome. I gotta go over you. Good job, Scott. Didn't break it. What a way to close out our way in, doubled up on trips. Gosh, yours is like dual colored. That's really neat. I'm really trying to work this fish because that shark. 
Perfect. Awesome. Scott had a nice little line release. I would say that fish was just under legal. Oh. Dude, I'll tell you what, kind of a workout on the seven, yeah, right? Man. It's awesome. That's a nice one. Yeah. Beautiful little triple tail right there. I bet he's 16 inches, 15 inches or so. But catch them on the fly end up being a little bit of a workout. I think we're going to see if we can doink a few more of these to close out our trip. They're not the hardest fish in the world to catch, but they do require some good sight, some good vision, um, good tracking, making a good cast. But if you do all those things right, they eat pretty well. But that doesn't mean they're easy to find either, man. You got to drive around a lot. And Scott and I on this trip kind of got... I don't know, lucky wouldn't be the word because we put in a ton of work, but we dialed these fish in really well and we have totally reaped the rewards for just the fun of catching and for stacking some meat in the cooler this trip, which was awesome. It's a giant bluegill. I know, it literally looks like the world's biggest bluegill. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of a little horrified to sit there and leave my hand. As we were pulling up on those two about five minutes ago, we watched a triple tail jump about four feet in the air and a shark go and try to eat it. So uh, there are sharks around. You guys might be wondering why I'm wearing this hat. So in the rainstorm back, Scott and I were running as fast as we could. Scott's hat blew off in the rain. It was pouring so hard. Scott just was like, leave it, leave it behind. It's fine. <laughs> and once we got back to the ramp, the storm literally just kind of separated and dissipated once it hit the mainland. But we still got swamped and dude, oh my God, the mosquitoes here are so unbelievable. And after it rains, it's like your body's crawling all over the place. Probably the only downside of this whole place is the mosquitoes and then like, you don't have any service, but that's actually kind of a nice thing to check out of your phone for three days. Hard when you have to, a little kid, but... To people that have problems with mosquitoes, it is legitimately a reason not... Like, you should not come you here. Not, like, you and I are if, two of the if, toughest people with mosquitoes, and we are, like, get, crawling in our If you skin. get bit by mosquitoes and you're, and the bites welt up, you're, you're this is not the like place Like, my back would to. look like I got hit with, like, a cat of nine tails. In the back <laughs> I'm, like, walking out of the screen because I'm knocking so many off. So I think on that note, we should probably end this video. Yeah, so I'm going to go home, see my family. The Everglades was an awesome experience. This is really my first time coming to this part of the glades. And I think we experienced everything there was. No giant, giant fish, but we caught a little bit of everything. If you can hear, there's wildlife everywhere. And that's kind of the coolest part is that you're seeing birds, crocodiles, manatees, dolphins, tarpons, sharks, alligators, every animal in Florida you're just kind of seeing. So it's been great, Scott. I'm gonna go home and get out of these freaking mosquitoes.